We've been talking about solving second order differential equations with the auxiliary equation, particularly the homogeneous with constant coefficients. Here we're just going to extend the idea to higher order differential equations and see how we would solve those basically the same way with the auxiliary equation. So here we have some nth order differential equation. We basically have the nth derivative being the higher power, so I'm just using this general notation. And so basically our auxiliary equation would be whatever a sub n, so whatever that constant is, m to the n, plus the coefficient of the next term, m to the whatever power that is, etc., until we get down to whatever the coefficient times m squared, plus whatever coefficient we have times m, plus maybe just some constant equal to zero. And so basically this expression here is going to be some sort of a polynomial that we then must use our algebra, our precalculus skills, to then factor this or find the solutions for m, maybe even numerically. So there are some ideas we could do here. Maybe we just see how to factor it, so we could certainly factor it. Uh, the second thing would be to use maybe some synthetic or polynomial long division to find the roots. Um, you might also use what's called the rational roots theorem or the rational zeros theorem. And then you could also do this uh, graphically or numerically if it looked like it was going to be very difficult to do by hand. Uh, you might be able to use a computer to do that as well, some sort of a solver. Uh, so but we'll focus on maybe the first three methods here, and certainly you could graph this and get an estimate or have a, a computer run some sort of a numerical solve on this. All right, our first example, 2y triple prime minus 6y double prime minus 5y prime plus 15y equals 0 will give us auxiliary equation 2m cubed minus 6m squared minus 5 m plus 15 equals 0. So if you haven't seen any of our videos about the auxiliary equation or this is new to you, you may want to figure out why we're doing this before you jump into this. But So that's basically where we'd end up, and I can see that this actually factors. I'm going to factor it by grouping here. So looking at the first group, I'll pull out a 2m square. Left over in the first group, we have m minus 3. And then over here in the second half, m minus 3 is also a factor of the second half, and we would need a negative 5 to produce the second half out there. So that will then give us 2m squared minus 5 times m minus 3 is equal to 0. And then we would solve each of these, right? So we'd have 2m squared minus 5 equal to 0, and we'd also have m minus 3 equal to 0. This one over here on the right hand side, not too bad, right? m is equal to 3, so that's one of our solutions there. On this left hand side here, when we solve this we'll get that m is equal to plus or minus the square root of 10 over 2. And so now we can use these three values for m. These are distinct so we can just go ahead and state our answer which, with each of these as part of an exponential. So we get y equals c1. I'll go ahead and write e to the 3x. We'll use our 3. And then to use our plus minus over here. So we'll have c2 e to the root 10x over 2 plus c3 e to the negative root 10x over 2. Or another way to write these last two, so it is possible that we may see the hyperbolic functions as a solution here, right? So c1e to the 3x, we got plus and minus the same thing, so we might say c2 cosh root 10x over 2 plus c3 c 
cinch root 10x over 2. So either of those would be a decent answer there. Looking at the next one here, y triple prime plus y double prime plus 12y prime equals 0. So we want to notice that the y term is missing. In other words, what will be the constant term in our auxiliary equation will be 0. So this is m cubed plus 8m squared plus 12m is equal 0. And then we can factor an m out, certainly, so that'll give us m times the quantity m squared plus 8m plus 12 equal to 0. We can factor this quadratic factor, and we'll get m plus 6 times m plus 2 when we're fully factored. So when we set each of these factors equal to 0, we will get that m is equal to 0, negative 6, and negative 2 in any particular order. So writing this in our general solution would be c1 e to the 0x, we'll talk about that in a second, plus c2 e to the minus 6x, plus c3 e to the negative 2x, and then just like we talked about in one of the previous videos with the second order, e to the 0x, e to the 0, certainly that's going to be 1 there. So really, I think we would probably just write this as y equals c1 plus c2 e to the minus 6x plus c3 e to the minus 2x. And that would be the nicer way to write that. So if we ever come across m is equal to 0, I think we'll go ahead and uh, use that, just c1 instead of e to the 0x. It's much nicer there. Another one here. We have the fourth derivative of y plus the third derivative of y minus 7y double prime minus y prime plus 6y equals 0. Our auxiliary equation for this will be m to the 4 plus m cubed minus 7m squared minus m plus 6 equal to 0. Now you may be able to factor this just by looking at it. If you're not sure, we may use the rational zeros idea, so remember we can take factors of 6 over factors of the lead coefficient. So factors of 6 over factors of 1 would give us either plus or minus 1, 2, 3, or 6 if they're rational. So let me just go ahead and set up my synthetic division. Maybe we'll do that. So setting up my synthetic division based on that auxiliary equation, that becomes a 1, a 1, negative 7, negative 1 and 6, those are my coefficients. I'll just test from this list here, I'll test positive 1 first. So if it's been a long time, remember we bring down the first one, so we'll keep the 1 and then multiply times what's outside and write it in the next column and add. So 1 times 1 gives us 1, we add and get 2. 2 times 1, we get 2, we add, we get negative 5. Negative 5 times 1, we get negative 5. That add down gives negative 6. Negative 6 times 1 gives negative 6 and 0. So we know that 1 is a 0. So in other words, m is equal to 1. And then what this gives us here is that m cubed plus 2m squared minus 5m minus 6 equals 0 is what we have left over. So if you're hopefully somewhat familiar with that, or this is just kind of a refresher for you, I guess. So then we would be going off of these numbers again, or maybe you know how to factor this already. So 1, 2, negative 5, negative 6. Uh, we might try, say, like negative 1 this time now, so testing negative 1. If we do that, that will give us a remainder of 0 also, so we know negative 1 is also a 0, so we have m equals negative 1 is also a 0. And then over here, the 1, 1, negative 6 tells us m squared plus m minus 6 equals 0, and then most of you from there can probably factor at that point without having to do much more synthetic. So here this would tell us m plus 3 times m minus 2 equals 0, 
and so we would get m is equal to negative 3, m is equal to positive 2. So we have four zeros, right? So we have m equals 1, negative 1, 2, and negative 3. And we'll use those values for m to write our general solution. And so our general solution then, if I use them in that order, will be y equals c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the minus x plus c3 e to the 2x plus c4 e to the minus 3x. Now it's certainly possible you could take these first two terms and create a cosh cinch type situation with those because those are positive and negative 1, but we'll go ahead and leave that here. And our last one, fourth derivative of y minus 3y double prime minus 28y equals 0 would have auxiliary equation m to the 4 minus 3m squared minus 28. And if I look at this, maybe some of you know that this is quadratic in form. So if we factor in terms of m squared instead of m, then we actually get... Looking at it this way, m squared minus 7 and m squared plus 4 would give us that. And then we could go ahead and solve each of these. So if we have m squared minus 7 equal to 0, and we have m squared plus 4 equals 0. So over here, m is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7. And then on this one, m is equal to plus or minus 2i. So if we think about our, in terms of complex values, so in this expression here, alpha is equal to 0 and beta is equal to 2. So this one here would give us e to the 0x outside of the parentheses, so we're not going to have an e to the alpha x there. So for our general solution, let's do all these. So first the real values, we have c1 e to the root 7 times x plus c2 e to the negative root 7 times x plus c3 cosine of 2x plus c4 sine of 2x. So remember the cosine and the sine terms we're getting from the complex values for m. Uh, the root 7s we're getting from the real values for m. And then it is possible we could rewrite the first two solutions because we did have a difference of squares we're solving there. So technically you may see this c1 hyperbolic cosine root 7x plus c2 hyperbolic sine cinch root 7x plus c3 cosine 2x and we're just keeping the other two terms plus c4 sine of 2x. Okay, so hopefully this gives you an idea of how it's pretty easy to expand the idea of the auxiliary equation to solve, um, you know, reasonably most polynomials. Uh, again, if you had too high of an order of a differential equation, you would probably need to solve this by computer numerically somehow. Uh, but these are pretty doable, so I hope this helps.